In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use the ZWO ASI Air with your Skyguider Pro or Star Adventure. And this is gonna allow you to do auto guiding and even a polar alignment without the need for a laptop. So this is really gonna help you keep a nice portable lightweight setup. To be clear though, you will also need an auto guider and guide scope if you don't have one already. And I have the ASI 120 mini here with the 30 millimeter F4 guide scope. And you can actually get all three of these things for about $400 as part of a bundle from ZWL. That's probably what I'd recommend if you don't have anything yet. But if you already have a ZWO auto guider and a guide scope, you can use those just fine. So the way this is gonna work is I wanna show you how to set everything up, connect all the cables, how to use the app, and then we'll head out in the field and actually cover the polar alignment process as well as the auto guiding process. First, let's take a look at what comes in the box with the ASI Air. And I've already taken most of it out, but we've got the most important things still in here. First up is the ASI Air itself. It's just a little case that holds a Raspberry Pi inside. That's really all there is to it. You're also gonna get a micro USB cable that will power the ASI Air because it has no internal battery. And unfortunately, it is very short and you will have to use this particular cable. You can't use any other micro USB you might have laying around the house because you'll probably get an under voltage warning. We'll talk about that later, but it's important that you actually use this included little power cable. There we go. So that's just gonna to connect to the power input here on the side of the ASI Air. In the box, you're also gonna get a 12 volt to five volt adapter. And the way this would work is you'd plug one end of the power cable in here. The other end, you would need a, a DC input of some sort. But this is really designed for people with like legit telescope mounts and things like that, which we don't have. We just have a Skyguider Pro or Star Adventure. So in that case, I'm not gonna be using this. And you will need a external battery of some sort. You know, they make a million of those cell phone charger little batteries. That's gonna work fine. But I personally use a Jackery 240 watt hour battery. This is way overkill. But at the same time, if you have a lot of devices you wanna keep charged and you're going on a trip, this is highly recommended. This is what I've been using for the past road trip. So the way this works is you're just gonna take your ASI air and the power cable, plug it into your battery, and then turn on the battery. Now, if you've got just like one of those little power bricks, that's gonna work fine too. That's what I'd probably recommend just to keep things light and simple, but I'm using this big guy here. Now that we've gotten that all out of the way, let's talk about how to actually turn on the ASI air. Again, there's no power button on here. There's no internal battery. So to actually start it up, you will need to turn on the battery itself and now you should see some red lights have turned on. At this point, the ASI Air is emitting a Wi-Fi network that you can connect to with your smartphone. So if you haven't done so already, I recommend grabbing your phone, loading up your app store, and downloading the ASI Air app. It is a free download, so it's not a big deal. Once you've got it installed though, that's how you're actually gonna control everything later on, is all through that app. So make sure you get that installed first thing, and then we can continue on with that later. But now I wanna show you how to actually connect all your devices properly to the ASI Air. The first thing you'll need, of course, is that auto guider. So if you don't have one yet, you really can't proceed. It, once you have your auto guider though, it should come usually with two different cables. And one of them will be a USB cable, the other an ST4 cable. You wanna make sure it has both of those. So in this case, I got my little rat's nest tangled up here, but here are two cables. ST4 kind of looks like a phone cable and USB is pretty self-explanatory. The way this is gonna work, is on the back of the auto guider, we have a ST4 cable input. So I'm just gonna plug it in there. And then the other end is gonna go into your actual star tracker. Whether you have the Sky Guider Pro or the Star Adventure, it's the same thing. There should be an input somewhere that says guide. So once you find that, you just plug in the ST4 cable to there. And there we go. That cable is ultimately gonna send the commands to your star tracker so you get much more accurate tracking. Finally, the USB cable which I have right here, one end is gonna go into your auto guider. And then the other end is gonna go into the front here of the ASI Air. And there's four ports, you can choose whatever one you want. So that's how you do a very basic connection. This is gonna allow you to do your auto guiding all through your smartphone app without needing a laptop. However, if you wanna do a polar alignment, unfortunately you will need to connect your DSLR as well. And I say it unfortunately because with my DSLR, they gave me this little short USB cable. And this kind of complicates things at night because I can't exactly move things around as much as I would like with such a short cable. Now I know I could spend probably $40 and get a longer one, but I'm not gonna do that. 
So we'll talk about this more later, but the way this would work, one end of this is gonna go into your DSLR. The other end is gonna go here on the front of the ASI Air, just like the auto guider did. And that's really all the connections that we have to worry about. Again, we have a main connection going to the battery. We have an ST4 cable going from the auto guider to our tracker. We've got a USB cable going from the auto guider to the ASI Air. And then finally, we have a DSLR cable going from the DSLR to the ASI Air. That one's kind of optional, but I'd still recommend finding that cable if you have it laying around the house. The last thing I want to touch on before we head out in the field is my mounts here. So for your guide scope, one of the most difficult things to figure out at first is how the heck you're going to mount this with your camera and lens or maybe you have a small telescope. If you watched my previous auto guider video, I had a Hachi mount on here originally. That really didn't work that well over the past six months. So since then, I've gotten a little Arca Swiss clamp and I've screwed that directly into the guide scope here. Then from here, I can clamp this whole thing to the side of my camera using my camera's L bracket. That's a really secure connection. I'd recommend if you want to give that a try. You will need an L bracket though for your DSLR. So make sure you grab one of those. And we'll look at this more out in the field, but this is now how I'm connecting everything to my camera. And it works a lot better than the uh, Hachi mount that I showed you in my previous auto guiding video. Now that we've covered the basics, we're gonna head out in the field and I'm gonna show you how to actually do your auto guiding as well as a polar alignment, all from the ASI Air. All right, and here we have my full ASI Air setup. So we'll walk through each piece together and then we'll talk about how to actually do our guiding and polar alignment. First up, we have my Nikon D750 attached to the William Optic Space Cat telescope. On the side here, we have the ASI Mini auto guider and the guide scope. Those are attached directly to this Arca Swiss clamp that I bought, and that's clamped right onto my camera's L bracket. The cool thing with this is I can slide it up or down and access the different ports on the side of my DSLR. Now, this cable we have coming out goes right to the ASI Air. The reason I had to connect my DSLR to the ASI Air is for our polar alignment. So we'll look at that here in a minute, but that's why that's connected. And then we also have the Skyguider Pro here, and then the big battery, which is powering the ASI Air. Now the problems I have with this setup are one, I have a giant battery that I have to put on a little table out here. Two, the cable from my DSLR is very short, which means I had to lower my tripod legs almost all the way. And as I'm recording this, I'm almost sitting on the ground rather than standing up, which I would like to be. So those are the two problems I really have, and they're just because I have short cables and a big battery. So if you get a nice little portable battery, that might help you out. And if you can find a, a relatively long cable to connect your DSLR to the ASI Air, that will help a lot. And there's my other Space Cat right there. <laughs> so that's how my setup looks, and that's really all there is to it. So once you've gotten all your gear connected, the battery's turned on, and the ASI Air is emitting a Wi-Fi network, now what we need to do is grab our smartphone and connect to the app. But before we do that, there's one other thing I want to touch on. See how my camera's pointed up? If this was at night, you'd want this pointed right up to the North Star. And that's gonna help with our polar alignment. If you're gonna be doing your polar alignment in the app, make sure at this stage that your camera and lens are pointed right up to the North Star. You got your latitude dialed in here on the base, etc. You should know how to do most of that by now. But anyway, once everything is connected, the battery's turned on, and the ASI Air is emitting a Wi-Fi network, now we can start up the app on our phone and continue on. We're gonna start off right at the beginning. If you just open up your ASI Air out of the box, you can follow along. The first thing we need to do is go to our phone's Wi-Fi settings and find the ASI Air Wi-Fi network. Next, we need to put in the password, and this should be 12345678. If you're not sure though, go over to your actual ASI Air unit, and on the right, it's gonna tell you the Wi-Fi name as well as the password. So once you get that information, you can come back to your phone and enter the password that you see on the side of your device. But again, it should be 12345678. Once you've done that, you can click connect, and now we're ready to continue on and go into the official ASI Air app. However, if you're on Android, you might encounter a weird bug that I did my first time. 
So if you go back to the ASI Air app and it's saying it still cannot connect your phone to the ASI Air, that indicates you have the same problem I did. And for whatever reason, I think this is just a weird Android bug, but if your phone has like an LTE connection going on in the background, that is for some reason preventing you from talking to the ASI Air. And I had the same problem with the Star Adventure Mini, where I could connect to the app, but the app could not talk to the Star Tracker. So point being, if you get some weird connection issues here, the way to fix it is to put your phone on airplane mode first. Once you put your phone on airplane mode, just cancel everything out, close out the app, and start this whole process over again. So your phone's on airplane mode. We'll start up the ASI Air app. It'll ask us to connect. And then we'll go back to our phone's Wi-Fi settings. And now we can connect to the ASI Air Wi-Fi network again. At this point, it should connect and start talking to the uh, ASI Air itself. And you can continue on. All right, once you're finally on this screen, we can continue on. And this is the most important part. So you wanna make sure you get all these uh, different fields set correctly. First, look for the auto guider in the upper right. You wanna make sure that it's finding your auto guider and you select it. If it can't find it, verify that it's plugged into your ASI Air via the USB cable. Next is the guide scope focal length. If you have the ZWO scope I mentioned, that is 120 millimeters. If you're not sure though, you can always check your manufacturer's website and it should list it somewhere on there. That's really important you put in the right focal length for the guide scope. Now for the filter wear and the focuser, you probably won't have either of those, so just leave them to none. And then down at the bottom, verify that you're using the correct latitude and longitude. If you're not sure what those are, there's a ton of different apps you can use to figure that out real quick. I would recommend something like the Star Adventure Mini Console app, which is a free download. You can find it in there, or you can try the Photographer's Ephemeris. There's a lot of different apps out there, but dial in your correct latitude and longitude. And now we can talk about your DSLR and lens. If you are gonna be connecting your DSLR, make sure first that it's turned on and the USB is connected and you should be able to choose it from the drop-down menu there under camera's main. While we're talking about DSLRs, verify that your camera's on full manual mode and you've also put the shutter speed to bulb mode. That's gonna be different for every camera, but normally you just go past 30 seconds and it'll now say bulb. Uh, you need to do both of those for everything to work properly. So get that taken care of. And then for the focal length of your lens or your telescope, this also needs to be input. I'm using the William Optic Space Cat right now, which is about 250 millimeters. And I think it actually automatically set it to 247 when I was using it the other night. So I'm just gonna leave it there. But if you're using like a 70 to 200 millimeter lens, for example, I would leave your lens zoomed out at 70 millimeters and put that in here to start off with. You can always change it later, but it's better to keep things simple for now. If you're really not sure what to put there though, just put it to zero and that'll work fine. Now, finally, for the most important part here, we need to go to the mount and choose on camera ST4. If you're using a SkyGuider Pro or Star Adventure, you will not find them listed here where you would think. So the only way to get this to work if you have a SkyGuider Pro or Star Adventure is choose on camera ST4. And then at that point, everything has been dialed in correctly. I can click the enter button and get to the main user interface. Now, honestly, I was a bit confused the first couple times I used this. There was a lot going on and I didn't really understand how it all worked. So with that in mind, the first thing to understand is that there's basically two different interfaces. And the one it's in right now is the camera interface. And you see that thing back here, this is a preview image it just took uh, with my camera and lens. So this is the main camera interface and if you look over on the right, there's a preview and it's in gold. If we click that, these are our four main options we can choose from. We have polar alignment, focus, preview, and auto run. We also have the exposure. We can change if we want to, all the way up to 300 seconds, etc. Now, I'm not gonna get into all the different camera settings in this video, because frankly, it's kind of confusing and it doesn't work that well, to be honest. But what I wanna show you First is how to do your polar alignment, because that's always the first thing you want to do at night. In order to do a polar alignment, again, make sure your camera's on bulb mode, and I'm actually gonna go check mine right now real quick to verify that. Yep, so my camera's on bulb mode. Now what I want to do is click where it says preview, 
and choose Polar Align, or PA. And here it's gonna tell us the preparation steps. Remember what I mentioned earlier in the video, you wanna make sure that your lens and camera are pointed right up to the North Star. If they're angled off to the left or the right, or your latitude wasn't dialed in correctly, this might not work because it's gonna do what's called plate solving. It's gonna look for a series of stars nearby the North Pole. And if you're too far off, it's not gonna work. So make sure that you're pointed up to the North Pole, everything's turned on, and now you can click the play button to continue on with the polar alignment. Before you click the play button over on the right, you can also change your DSLR's exposure time. I would probably recommend two or three seconds. That tends to work well. And then finally, you can click the play button and it's gonna give you this message where it says skip while using manual mount. All that means is that we're using a Skyguider Pro or Star Adventure, no fancy features. So you can just click skip. And now what it's gonna do is plate solve. In other words, it's gonna look up at the sky, it's gonna take a couple photos and figure out your focal length, the stars that it sees and more. So in this case, it took two seconds and it worked. So what I wanna do now is click next. This should all be pretty automatic, provide your point up close to the North Pole. Now it's telling me after I click next, I need to rotate the RA axis 60 degrees. And if you've ever used SharpCap before, this is already the exact same process. If you're not familiar with this though, it's pretty simple. So you wanna go around to your camera and uh, the front of your star tracker as well, loosen your clutch and then rotate the entire declination bracket around about 60 degrees, doesn't have to be perfect, and then lock down the clutch. At this point, you can go back to the app and then click rotated. If everything worked correctly, it's now going to solve the image again, and it's going to calculate how far off your polar alignment actually is. So all you have to do is click the let's go button, and it's gonna give you a crosshair basically that shows your current misalignment. And this is just like SharpCap again, if you're used to that. If you're not, it's actually very simple. You're gonna see an up or down arrow and a left or right arrow over there on the right-hand side of the screen. And what you need to do is make small adjustments to your altitude and azimuth screws on the base of your star tracker. So therefore, in this case, it's telling me I need to go up two degrees, two minutes, 56 seconds. So I'd go over to the altitude knob on my star tracker and turn that up quite a bit. And in this case, there we go. Now I'm down to just one minute off. That's really good. And for my left and right arrows, I need to move the tracker to the left about 39 minutes. So I'll go to my azimuth screws, turn them both in the same direction to turn the tracker either left or right. And then when I'm ready, I'll click refresh on the app. And you can see there, it's gonna take another photo and see how far off I am. So what you're gonna keep doing, just to reiterate, you're gonna make small adjustments on the base of your tracker using the altitude and azimuth screws. You're gonna click refresh here on the app, and then it's gonna tell you how far off you are again. So make more adjustments, click refresh, see how far off you are, make adjustments, refresh, etc. And you wanna keep doing this until you get the error as small as possible. And when you get it really close, that little smiley face will cheer up and it'll congratulate you. If you can't get it that close though, you could spend you know 10 minutes just trying to get it and it keeps going too far in one direction. So point being, if you have a lot of trouble here and you get it really close within, I would say 10 minutes, either up or down, left or right, that's really good and you can just leave it, especially if you're shooting relatively wide, like let's say 200 millimeters or so. Uh, point being, if you just can't get the polar alignment perfect, you can hit the stop button there on the right and just continue on with the workflow. However, if you manage to get it really good, it's gonna congratulate you, and now you know you have a rock solid polar alignment. And then at that point, you can continue on and start your guiding. Recently, there was a firmware update for the ASIR, and it is now possible to do all of your polar alignment and guiding with your auto guider. So instead of having to connect the DSLR like I just showed you, you can do everything with just the auto guide. This is really gonna help uh, at least me out in the field. I don't have to worry about that little short cable anymore and this is gonna make my life a lot easier. So if you're in the same boat, maybe you don't wanna connect your DSLR to the ASI Air, all you have to do is where you have your camera's main, just put that to the mini. And if you do that and the app crashes on you, that's probably a bug they're still working on, best I can tell. 
So point being, if you want to go this route, uh, you will not want to have your DSLR connected at first because in my experience, it keeps crashing. So with that in mind, I'm going to turn off my DSLR and unplug it. That way it won't crash on me anymore. And then we'll restart the ASI Air app. Again, this is the 1.3 version of the firmware. Uh, that's apparently still a bug, bug they're working on. But now what we can do, instead of putting the 120 mini as our guide camera, the way we normally do it, we're gonna set it as our main camera in place of our DSLR. So essentially we have to do it this way first. Once we've done our polar alignment, then we can switch our auto guider back to the actual guiding. A Little bit of a workaround, but it still works a lot better than the DSLR. So again, we'll choose our main camera as ASI 120 mini in this case. And the main scope focal length, this has to be the same as your guide scope focal length. So make sure you put that in. In this case, I've got them both the same, so we're good there. And now I'll hit enter. Once you get now to our main camera shooting screen here, it's probably gonna start taking a photo automatically. And if it does, you can just click the stop button there on the right to stop all that. The first thing you always wanna do though at this stage, especially if you've been using a DSLR, is go up to the camera icon in the top tab. From here, make sure your main scope focal length is correct because the first few times I did this, it was still trying to use my telescope focal length of 250 millimeters. So if you have the wrong focal length in here, make sure you put it in to your guide scope focal length. All right, so we got that set in. Now we're just gonna go through our normal process that I just showed you. It's gonna be the same exact thing. We'll click on preview and then choose PA or polar align. Now instead of using our DSLR, we're just using our auto guider. And you'll also wanna make sure you change the exposure that might've gotten reset. I usually recommend two or three seconds. That gives you some better signal to noise ratio. Now you'll click the start button and it's gonna go through and do its plate solving. And it's gonna work exactly the same as I showed you. I'm not gonna go through the full process again. You should know it pretty well by now. But that's how you use your auto guider in place of a DSLR. And this is the way I'm gonna be doing things from now on because this is a lot easier for me. The last thing you gotta remember though, is that when you're ready to do your uh, guiding, we'll go back to our main screen here. We have to change everything back over. So I'm gonna double click on my little graph icon. And now if I go up to the top, my main camera is set to the mini, but my guiding camera is set to none. So I need to make sure that I choose the, the mini. And if you try and do it and it doesn't let you, you'll have to go back to the camera icon, turn it off there, put it to none. Now you can go to the auto guider button down below, choose the mini, turn it on, and there we go. So that's a great workaround. And now we can just go through our normal guiding process that I'll show you next. Once you've completed your polar alignment, we can go on next to guiding. So in order to get to the guiding, I recommend if you click where it says PA, you can go to, the, let's say, preview or focus. Now you're back to the main camera workspace. Now this actually took me a while to figure out how the heck to even get to the actual auto guiding menus. And it's actually very simple. You see, uh, it all disappeared there. So again, the interface is kind of wonky, but if you just click once, that'll turn it on and turn it off. What I want to do though, is grab this little chart here. If you don't see the chart, make sure that you clicked on guide there on the left. But once you have this chart, you can just double click on it and it should take you now to the main auto guiding interface. From here, there's a couple things we need to do first. And if you look at the exposure down here in the lower right, I recommend putting it to three seconds. That's gonna give you pretty good results in most cases. Once you've got the exposure settled in, now we need to do some more advanced things. So if you click on the little crosshair at the top, the auto guiding button up here, you should get to your guiding settings. And now what you wanna do is put the gain to about 80 or 90 for most cameras. That tends to work pretty well, and I'm at 85. You also notice that my guide camera has a little green light next to it. It's turned on and ready to go. Make sure here that auto restore calibration is turned off. That'll actually cause problems. But really all you have to do at this window here is turn up the gain to about 85 or 90 or 75, somewhere in that area. Once that's dialed in, go down to the telescope, make sure it still says on camera ST4 and the little green icon there indicates that you're connected. 
Finally, one other thing I want to look at, if you go down to the, uh, actually up to the top here, the Wi-Fi button, you're going to see a couple different things. There's a 5G Wi-Fi. I'd recommend turning that on if your phone can connect to 5G Wi-Fi connections. That'll give you a better, more stable uh, interface that you're working with. So if you have that functionality on your phone, turn that on if you haven't done so already. And then also the under voltage warning down here at the bottom. It says if you didn't use the supplied power cable, you might have problems basically. And that's why I stressed at the start of the video. So if you see under voltage warning, yes, make sure you're actually using the cable that came with the ASI Air and swap that out. That's really all we have to worry about here. So you can click off of there to the left. Now, in order to actually use your SkyGuider Pro or Star Adventure, you have to do one very important thing. So click on the graph there on the left, and that'll bring up your full graph here. And it kind of looks like a PhD too. But at this point, you should see the deck mode there. It's probably set to auto by default in green. What you need to do is click on that auto north, south, and then make sure it says off. If you do not turn this off, the guiding will not work. So verify that's turned off. That's probably the most important thing to do here. Now at this point, we've set everything up and we're ready to begin guiding. Just to be clear though, if you're still kind of new at this, you don't want to start your guiding until you've pointed your camera and lens up at the object that you want to photograph, whether that's the Orion Nebula, the Pleiades, whatever it is. If you try and auto guide when your camera's still pointed up to the North Pole, it's not going to work properly uh, because there's not going to be enough star motion. So point being, the way this whole workflow is going to work is you go back to your camera, take your test photos, get everything centered up and ready to go. And at the point where you would normally start taking your photos, that's when you want to come back to the phone here and then begin your auto guiding. All right, if you're still with me, this is actually the easiest part is the auto guiding. So the first thing you want to do is verify that the exposure there on the lower right is set to about three seconds. That tends to work best. Then you can click the two arrows on the right-hand side of the screen. They're like in a loop. Once you click that button, you should now see the stars on your main imaging screen here. This is a direct feed from your auto guider and guide scope. If you don't see anything here, either you forgot to take off the cover from your guide scope or you never focused your guide scope or it got thrown off. So you might have to try and refocus it. But once you can see the stars, you can click on any one with your finger and make that your guide star. Now you don't want to pick the brightest star visible because that will actually result in worse guiding. You want one kind of like you see here where it's not the brightest, but it's also not the dimmest. Once you're ready, you can finally click the little crosshair icon on the right, that's the begin guiding button. And then it's gonna tell you that the deck guiding is turned off. That's what we wanna see because if it's not turned off, we're gonna have problems. So you can click confirm. And then at this point, we're finally ready to start our guiding. So we'll just click okay. And now what it's gonna do is run through what's called a calibration. Now the way this calibration works is you're gonna see the two yellow dotted lines and it's gonna say west step two, three, it'll probably go up to around 15 or so. And this whole process is gonna take roughly two minutes to complete. Really what it's doing is it's watching which way the star drifts. And when it does that, it realizes which way is up, down, north, south, east, west, whatever. So with that in mind, we're just gonna sit back, relax, wait about two minutes for the calibration to complete. And I'm gonna speed this up for the purpose of this video so you can actually see what happens. So again, it's going to the west, then it goes back to the east, and those crosshairs should center right on your guide star. The lines will turn green. And then at that point, you've officially begun guiding. And you don't have to do anything else from here. It's just gonna work. So the actual guiding process is very simple to do. It just takes a lot of work to actually get to this final step. And once it's running, you're pretty much good to go. So once you see the lines on the graph there, the blue indicates your right ascension. That's kind of the main thing we can adjust. The red line indicates the declination, which we cannot adjust with the Sky Guide Pro or Star Adventure. So if you see the red line just jumps right off the graph, probably that means that your polar alignment wasn't that accurate. So you might want to go back and check that. Usually that's what that's referring to. But at this point, you know, if you look at the blue line, as long as we're between plus and minus four arc seconds, that's usually really good tracking. If you have a big telephoto lens up to 600 millimeters, you want to try and stay between plus and minus two. That's really accurate. And now you can just kind of sit back, relax, and start taking your actual photos on your DSLR. Now is when you actually want to do it once the guiding has begun. All right, well, I think I've thrown enough at you in today's video. But before we go, I want to do a quick shout out for my new Patreon page. 
And this is where, if you want, you can pay 10 bucks a month for the Andromeda level package, and you're gonna get special access to premium tutorials every month. So I'm usually gonna upload one, two, maybe even three videos a month, and you won't find these anywhere else. So I'm gonna cover some of my advanced blending techniques, how I actually take my nightscape photos, and a whole lot more. We got a lot to get to in the coming months here on Patreon. But if you're interested in something much more comprehensive that's already completely designed, I'd recommend my Deep Space course, which has, at this point, over 15 hours of tutorial videos. And we have a lot of uh, post-processing workflows we're gonna do where you might get a photo like this straight out of your camera. I'm gonna show you how to turn it into something like that. Uh, same thing with the Orion Nebula here. We get into a lot of stuff here. So this is all available on my website. I'll have a link in the description as well as a little pop-up. But uh, it's a lot of fun to really work with these deep space objects, but you gotta know what you're doing. So again, that's my deep space course. By far the most comprehensive thing you'll ever find on the internet uh, for this kind of stuff. And that's all I got for you today. So I hope you'll join either my Patreon or check out my deep space course. And I hope you learned a lot in today's tutorial.